I've been getting a lot of complaints lately. Peeps, what happened to all the gaming content? Where's all the gaming content? Mm. Peanut butter gamer? More like peanut butter eater. That's an actual comment I got the other day. The kids are killing me on TikTok. They're killing me. Well, I figured maybe they're right. Let's do another gaming video. This is a video I've wanted to do for a while now. I'm gonna go over and show it to you all of the rarest games that I own. I've been a gamer for a long time, way before it was cool, and then it was cool, and then it wasn't cool again. I don't really know where we're at right now, but uh, you know, I've been around for a bit. I've collected a lot of games, and what do you know, some of them have ended up being kind of rare. I've got different things from GameCube, Wii U, uh, NES, obscure Japanese things, and anywhere in between. I don't have any particular order, I'm just gonna kind of go for it. How about this one? Demon Souls, uh, the collector's edition specifically, or I should say the deluxe edition. Not the most rare out of all the games I have by any means, but this did end up being somewhat uh, expensive over time. It's not in amazing condition, unfortunately, as you can see, but not too bad. I still have everything that came with it. The uh, little art book here. I've got the strategy guide. I still have the box it came in. I see this going anywhere from uh, 150 to 750 completely sealed. Even as high as like 290? Again, mine's not in amazing condition, so I doubt I could get that much for it, but still, not too bad. The strategy guide was in particular the reason I wanted to get this because I knew how hard the game was and uh, especially back then I mean, it wasn't that long ago but it was kind of hard to find like uh, walkthroughs and stuff like that. I definitely used this uh, strategy guide quite a bit. I feel like I was one of the few people that was actually really into the original Demon Souls but didn't play uh, Dark Souls when it came out afterwards which was way more popular. In fact I don't even think I knew it existed. I don't even remember how I heard about Demon Souls. I probably saw it on something like uh, G4 TV or something like that. Yeah I wish I had kept it in slightly better condition if I had known it was going to be expensive. I would have, but uh, I'm not that careful of a person, let's be real. All right, what do we got next? How about this one? We got, uh, hey, maybe you've heard of this game before. I don't know. The Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess. Some of you probably have heard about it out there. I didn't even know that this was rare uh, until I was actually doing some research for this video. I have a few different instances of that in this video. It's not really that surprising that a game that everybody wants to play and everybody wants to be re-released onto the Switch, but hasn't been yet, would be expensive. I mean, if you walk into a game, store, things like this are going to be pricey, all the different Pokemon games, things that people actually want to play. But I was surprised specifically because this one's so much more expensive than the Wind Waker version. I would have thought that Wind Waker was a more popular game and there would be more demand for it than the Twilight Princess one, but apparently not. This is going for upwards of $100. Whereas again, the uh, Wind Waker version is going for closer to $50 to $60, which is, you know, what it, what it costs initially. Sometimes even lower. I also do have the uh, Amiibo that came with the, what was it, like the special edition, the collector's edition. This thing seems to be even more expensive in the like $140, $160 range. I have it loose, of course, one of the Amiibo that I actually did open is <laughs> probably worth way more than most of the other ones I have. Probably combined on some of them. I have the box for it somewhere, but it's like in the freaking attic or something. I, it, I couldn't, I didn't want to bother digging it out. Yeah, one of my favorite Amiibo for sure. I don't think that this game had instructions. I, I would have kept them if it did. Uh, this is around the time, I guess, when they sort of stopped doing like uh, detailed, much less color, uh, uh, instruction books. I still miss that. I know I'm not the only one. The prices go up, but the product product quality and stuff goes down. Wow. All right, let's go for something a little bit older now. Well, I mean, Wii U and uh, PS3. That is kind of old for a lot of people at this point. Showing my age here. I'm gonna go even older. With an NES game, one that I actually did a video on back in the day, Castle of Deceit. Everybody's favorite PBG video, right? That was a good one, right? Can't really remember. <laughs> this is a bootleg NES game. Let's see how much this is going for. I feel like this is purely based on memory. I bought this for maybe like 85 bucks or something at the time. Now it is going for, ooh, nice, 150, 160, 170. Ooh, it just keeps going up, baby. Yeah, there's actually not that many copies being sold, really. It's a fairly uncommon game. I mean, again, this is obviously an unlicensed NES game. Guys, I don't know if you knew this, but you're actually not supposed to store your NES games in water. So, you know, that's a nice little tip for retro collecting from, uh, from peeps here for you. Yeah. This one's looking a little dirty. Uh, this was about what it looked like when I first got it, though. So this wasn't me. I can manage to clean this up if I really, if I really wanted to. Especially some of this gunk on the side. This is like 25-year-old gunk. A lot of the old bootleg NES games are pretty expensive these days, but not all of them. There were some that I picked up at, uh, randomly, like uh, hold on, I got it right here. Right, more than I thought. Dang, I actually have a decent amount of them. RBI Baseball, Skull and Crossbones. That's a classic. Indiana Jones, A Temple of Doom. These are a couple that I got for PB and Jeff videos. Bible games, those are always funny. Even a 
gold one here. Fantastic Adventures of Dizzy. None of these, to my knowledge, are actually really worth very much. I kind of had a little kick for a while when, when I did this Castle of the Sea video where I was obsessed with these bootleg NES games. I'll still buy one every now and then if I see it, you know, at like half price books for $2.99. Why not, you know? But every now and then you get one like this. I don't know if it's just so bad that it's good. Maybe it's that kind of thing. I don't think there was an AVGN video or anything on it at the time. Sometimes you'd see like old bad NES games going up in price if he did a video on it or something like that. Yeah, so I couldn't tell you why this one uh, made the cut. Maybe it's this nice blue color. This blue and the gold. If that's not worth $150, I don't know what is. Chibi Robo for the GameCube. I never played this game until I did my top 10 GameCube games video. I just thought it would be fun. I checked it out. It was always on my list of like games that I might play one day. I was very glad that I did. <laughs> I played this again since just because it's so much fun. Apparently it's expensive now. I don't even I, I don't even know. Dang, two hundred dollars? Wasn't that much when I bought it even like five years ago or whenever that was. But don't tell me it was longer. Hey, it's worth it. Well, if you have the money, it's worth it. You could just end it. I mean, you could only you can only purchase this legally. There's no other way you could play it. I don't believe it has ever been re-released to my knowledge, which is a complete shame, honestly. Yeah, if you're unfamiliar with this game, you uh, are a little tiny robot and you clean up people's shit. Yeah, it sounds not so great, but it is. <laughs> See, look at this instruction booklet. Look at this. Try not to mess it up. Oh, that's two dollars off the price right there. I bent the page a little. Man, there was nothing better back in the day than getting a game and uh, just reading through this. Like, look at this. This is so good. This is what they've taken away from us. I seriously, I would uh, get a new game and I would just take the instruction booklet to school with me and read it. And get so excited all day to come home and play it. And uh, you know, I guess I paid attention a little bit, but not that much. It's a shame what happened to Chibi Robo. The first one, it was such a classic, and not. Not all the other ones are that bad. I even talked about the uh, 3DS like AR camera game on a video recently on PBG. It's not as bad as people make it out to be. I even hear that Whiplash game isn't that bad. Son, of a, bitch, it son of a bitch! But definitely does not come close to this original game. Next, let's do Harvest Moon, one of my favorite games. If you're familiar with my old videos, Harvest Moon specifically for the SNES. How much is this one going for these days? What? No way it's that much. Yeah, 350 loose? 380 loose? 419? You could quit work for a couple weeks if you sell this thing. This is the original version of Harvest Moon, and uh, it hasn't dated as poorly as you might expect. I've been recently replaying through all the Harvest Moon games. Totally uh, not for a video any or anything in the future of this year. And while I do have some complaints about this one, it actually, again, it holds up really well. Uh, that's main, my main issue. I miss the character portrait arts. You know, you talk to any villain in most Harvest Moon games and uh, you know you'll get a little cool uh, cute little picture of them or something that that doesn't exist in this one but I mean other than that it's basically the same game I actually have a funny story about this one my friend Josiah who's a great musician by the way I'll put a link to his channel here he gave me a gift at a convention one day he said oh I found this game and I bought it I hey you, you can have it if you want something like that and I was like oh, okay cool I don't even remember what it was it was some old uh, Super Nintendo game in a box or something I think it was an old like tennis game or something and you know I played games like that on PB and Jeff all the time, so didn't really think that much of it. But you know, in the hubbub excitement of a convention, I kind of forgot to open it and I got home and I put it on my shelf or something and you know, I just didn't really get around to opening it up. Fast forward years later, I was replying to someone on Twitter about how I wish I had the SNES uh, Harvest Moon and then Josiah responded to me and was like, hey, check that game I gave you a while back. And I was like, what? Open up the box? This wasn't it. <laughs> Harvest Moon was inside of the tennis game. I'm sorry, Josiah, I, di I didn't open up the box. I'm a fraud. Yeah, this is actually an insanely cool present. Thank you again, Josiah, if you just happen to be watching this. Now that I know I have it, I treasure it. All right, we actually have a lot left. Let's see. Pokemon, Soul Silver, and Heart Gold. These are like the big box versions. One of them was my wife's, and one of them was mine. I mean, we didn't know each other at the time this game came out, but we both just so happened to get the opposite one. You could probably tell which one was mine versus which one was hers based on the quality of the box. Uh, this Soul Silver one was hers. How much are these going for? Looks like about 170 for the Soul Silver Edition, 175. These are again the big box versions that come with the uh, Poke Walker. We do have these Poke Walkers, so I don't think it's actually inside of the box right now. Although all the instructions and everything are, I'm pretty sure the Heart Gold one is actually even worth more. But mine's so messed up, it probably isn't. Also. 
I don't know where my box is. <laughs> it's gotta be somewhere. I'm not that organized, unfortunately. But yeah, Pokemon games are always expensive. You can go into any game store right now and they'll have them in the glass box there. You'll see just like 75 bucks for like Pokemon Game Boy or something. It's just cause they're in such high demand. Insanely popular games. Sometimes a game is rare for just that simple of a reason. Everybody wants to play it still. There might not be a good port of it anywhere. Before you know it, it's $180. Next, I have three games. These could be the most rare games that I have. I'm actually not sure because I haven't looked up the prices in a while. We will do that right now. Link the Faces of Evil for the CDI. Link the Wand of Gamelon for the CDI. And what do you know? Zelda's Adventure for the CDI. I believe, if I recall, I bought Zelda's Adventure myself. But if I recall correctly, I was sent Link the Faces of Evil and Link Wands of Gamelon by a uh, viewer. I don't think it was the same viewer. I didn't even have this original one when I made the video because I had the long Professor Levi disc or whatever. But someone sent it to me after the fact, and I did actually use this one for the uh, Zelda's Adventure video. I mean, the Wand of Gamelon video. I have so many good memories of playing these games. Half the time I convinced myself that they actually were good just because I had fun making those videos. They're not good. <laughs> They're not good. Let's see. I'm almost nervous to see how much these are now because I'm just sort of like fondling them. First, we have Faces of Evil, $309. That's sealed, so that's going to be crazy expensive. 200 This is just the disc only? Someone's selling it for 150 Wand of Gamelon. Gamelon is a little less expensive, but no, not by that much. And this is the like cardboard sleeve version. It seems like that one might be a little more expensive. Hard to say. All right, Zelda's Adventure. That one, I'm not sure. Is that one gonna be less or more? I would think it might be more expensive because it's probably even more rare than the other two, but it also, there might be less demand for it. What? No way. Okay, well, yeah, it's more expensive than the other ones. But that has gone up in price a sig. Holy crap. $1,200? Uh, put that back in the safe. See, I guess this one is even less common than the other two. That's my guess. Rope, bombs. You want it? It's yours, my friend. Yeah, you guys remember that? That was pretty good when that happened. Subscribe for more gaming videos. I promise I won't do another food video ever again. The instructions are stuck. I don't want to take them out. Can't mess it up. I just realized this game is worth more than me. So yeah, that one's definitely in my top two, at least, if not number one. It's crazy how much those games in particular have gone up in value. It's just the meme factor, I guess. I sure as hell didn't pay $1,200 when I did the video on this. That much I can tell you. I might have paid like 150 or 200 or something, but nothing close to that. All right, next, I think I want to do a week. Weird one. I have a couple things in here that you probably wouldn't expect at all. They're not even really games. I mean, they are, but you'll see. Here's the first one. The GameCube Game Boy Player Disc, specifically. This is another one I did not realize how expensive it was until I was doing this. The GameCube had a expansion that you could put onto the bottom that you could plug Game Boy and Game Boy Advance games into. I was literally just using this yesterday to record uh, Game Boy Advance footage for a game for a video I'm working on. But in order to use that, you needed this Game Boy Player disc. I mean, it literally won't work without it. And apparently, it is kind of expensive. Looks like it goes for $130 or so, $120, $130, even without the actual expansion to go onto the GameCube. This is one of the ones that makes sense because it's just an easier, more convenient way to play uh, Game Boy Advance games or Game Boy games, especially if you're trying to record it or something for your YouTube channel or whatever, which is, you know, more prevalent than ever. Mine needs a little bit of cleaning a little bit a little bit but yeah i'm assuming this one is just kind of hard to find these days and it is a nice and practical way to play and record your game boy game boy advance game so that kind of explains this one i do find it interesting why some games are worth a lot of money and some aren't again even like the wind waker twilight princess one sometimes i'm not really sure what the answer is like why one is did they make more wind waker copies it's probably that i guess next i will move on to probably the rarest one it's not the most expensive in fact it's probably the cheapest out of all of these, but it is the rarest. Another game we covered in a video, we have Makoto-chan no Wonder Kitchen. This I covered in the very first sellout games video, not the worst ever sellout games, but the one I did before that. This was a game to celebrate Ajinomoto Mayonnaise, which is apparently a brand in Japan. My understanding is that this game was released only in a contest. And if I'm correct, there was only a few hundred copies of this game, like at all. The reason reason it's not more expensive is just that there's not a lot of demand for it. I mean, people don't even really know that it exists, or at least not when I uh, first bought this. I don't think I paid very much for it at all, considering there's barely any copies of it in the world, and this one's in insanely good condition. Wonder Kitchen. Oh, man. 
The instruction booklet. This was one of my favorite videos to work on back in the day. Look at this little Makoto chum with her mayonnaise. So cute. I actually don't open this up and look at it very often because I don't want to mess it up. So this is kind of a treat for me as well. Well, as well. I, I'm, I'm probably the only one who cares about this game. Yeah, it's a really weird game. It's an advertisement for mayonnaise, but it involves just like moving around into different trippy worlds and settings. And like you're playing some weird quiz game against a witch who's asleep. And then all of a sudden you're on a pirate ship. And then every now and then you make food with mayonnaise in the kitchen. Very, very strange game. Now let's check how much it's worth. I doubt it's gone up in price. Hey, maybe my video was such a big hit that now it's like the most uh, highly demanded game on the planet. Okay, hey, it has gone up, it looks like. There's no way I paid. This is, we're seeing 160, 190, 130. Only three copies of it. Oh no, there's more. This is actually kind of strange because I could bear, I couldn't even find a copy of the game for sale when I was first doing the video. It wasn't until afterwards that I found a, a copy of it for sale. Yeah, so I could be wrong about how many copies of it were made. My understanding of it is it was, it was very low. One of my favorite games that I own. Anytime someone asks me what's my favorite like co collectible I have, this is one of them. All right, next we have another Harvest Moon game. Harvest Moon 64. You can uh, probably see there's a couple games missing from the background up there. This is one of them. Unfortunately, this is not in great condition. It's a little bit beat up, but it's not too bad. It's hard to find these old uh, N64, Super Nintendo, NES game cardboard uh, boxes in good shape. This is actually one that was gifted to me. I was a Harvest Moon fan for a long time and I always wanted Harvest Moon 64, but every time I would go to the game store at the time, the retro game store, it always cost about uh, 60 bucks or so. And I didn't really have that much money at the time. I'm talking like when I was a teenager. So I was unfortunately never able to get it, but at some point um, as an adult, someone sent it to me. Maybe I mentioned it in like a Let's Play or something sometime that I wanted it. Someone sent it to the PO box. So shout out to uh, you if you're watching. I don't know how much it's worth now though. Let's just check. Specifically in box, looks like 120, 190 complete in box, 125. Yeah, so not bad. Even loose, it's going anywhere from 70, 75, 85. I think this game is now on Switch. I, I don't think you need to buy it for the uh, N64 anymore. I, I I was under the impression that this game was uh, unportable. I, I had heard rumors that the coding of the game was so sloppy that they just weren't able to port it or anything. I, I don't know if that even makes sense, but that was always my my understanding of it. But apparently it's on Nintendo Switch Online now. Potpourri. She's so stupid. You do your best though, Potpourri. All right, I'm gonna do a couple more that I uh, did videos on or I covered in videos. Magician Quest Mysterious Times. And I am so lucky because this is another game that uh, somebody sent to me. I assume it was fairly rare at the time and expensive at the time when they sent it to me. This They sent it for a PB and Jeff video, which we did do a couple videos on. I've since come to appreciate the game a lot more since we recorded those Let's Plays. I went back and read some of the comments on those. We had some Magician's Quest fans in the comments that were very mad at us for basically calling it an Animal Crossing ripoff. It is though, as I covered in my uh, worst ever ripoffs games video. It basically Basically, is an Animal Crossing ripoff, but in, in a good way. It's a good game. This is the only version of the game in the series that was released in the US. Because of that, especially, it's extra expensive. Let's see how expensive. $120 loose. Here we go. $150, $200, $200. And this one's going for four. That's that's sealed. Yeah, as you can see here, there's some other versions of this game that were never translated. I'm really sad about that. I really wish that they would translate them. The new ones, like for the 3DS, look really good. But yeah, this is the only version that was ever translated. So unless you uh, can speak Japanese or you want to hold up your phone and Google Translate the entire time. The first grader's breasts. FBI, open up! Don't say that! Then this is your only option. It still holds up really well, in my opinion. It's kind of cryptic. You can uh, listen to me talk about it in my Worst Ever Solid Games uh, video if you're curious. And of course, you can always uh, play it by not buying it. I mean, no, you can't. There's no way. There's no way to do that. It's impossible. The other game that's missing from the back over there, <laughs> Super Mario RPG. I personally like the Japanese box better. I, I remember we showed that off in a video here on this channel a little bit ago. But this one is more expensive, that's for sure. This box is actually in pretty good condition. I don't remember where I got this. I assume I must have bought it or maybe my wife got it for me for a Christmas present or something. This has always been one of my favorite games. And until it was recently remade for the Switch, I don't think there was any other way to play this. I don't think it got like ported or anything. Let's see, what is this going for right now? 225? And this box doesn't even look that clean. 350? 150, but that's a bid. So that's gonna be more. 200? Yeah, this game is pricey. Even with the Switch 
version out, I guess this version still has some demand. Sometimes it's just about collector's value. You know, people like to have the original box. I mean, I'm the same way. I don't $200 want the original box, but hey, I already have it, so that works. I owned this game as a kid too. And again, not the boxed version, but uh, I think my brother has it now. But yeah, it's just crazy how sometimes just games from your childhood, you look back 15 years later, it's like, oh, this game, this game's worth a few hundred dollars. Uh, I mean, I bought it for retail price back in the day. All right, I think I have three more games. Oh no, wait, four. One of them I have that's still like pretty interesting. I mean, they're all interesting, but one in particular, I'm saving that for towards the end. Next, we will go with another game I covered recently-ish in a video on the PBG channel, I should mention. This channel is now getting big enough that I have to specify which 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 channel. Ribbit King for the GameCube. This is a game I first saw from a Chadtronic stream. I just saw him playing it. It really interested me. And so I bought it just pretty much just for that. You can get this for cheaper on the PS2, but my PS2 never works. So uh, yeah, I got it on the GameCube. This is one I'd like to say I got for a cheap price and it became more expensive later, but I'm pretty sure I actually bought this probably fairly peak uh, price point. Let's see. Unless it went up by a lot. Um, uh, it may have gone up a little bit, but it's about where it was before. I think I probably bought it for like $160. Of course, I was doing a video on expensive Japanese games. Uh, so I was able to write it off my taxes. That doesn't make it free like some people think, but you know, hey, at least it's something. It was for work, okay? God, get off my case. 180, around 180, 150 or so. The PS2 version is probably, I'm afraid to look it up. PS2. Oh, well, it's, it's kind of pricey too. Just nowhere near as expensive as the GameCube version. Again, I love a lot of PS2 games, but my console, I don't know if you've heard of Disc Read Error. Yeah, it's, it's kind of hard to use PS2, unfortunately. My PlayStation 1 never fails. My PS2, I think I have three different PS2s and they're constantly crapping out. I covered this again in a video if you want to check it out in more detail, but this is a game where you uh, are a little guy and you abuse little frogs and force them to be a ball for you in a game of golf, also known as Frolf, because it's golf, but it's frogs, so it's Frolf. It's a very complicated story. You got to save the planet, okay? Or it'll blow up. It's essentially an arcade sports game. I guess a sort of golf goofy cartoon golf game, but it also has some funny cutscenes and animation and stuff I have always wanted to play this with actual other players one of these days I'm gonna have to get Chad or someone over to uh, 1v1 me in froth. Okay, this is kind of a strange one I did not know that this game was apparently rare until now we have game and warrior for the Wii U This game can go upwards of like a hundred dollars or so I don't know. I guess it just wasn't a very big hit and so there wasn't a whole lot of copies and unfortunately, it's a little busted. I mean, Wario says it's the best game ever, so like, why didn't more people buy it? We played a lot of WarioWare games on PB and Jeff. This is one that we played. I remember being, you know, kind of having mixed feelings about Game and Wario. It wasn't terrible. I feel like it gets a bad rap. There was definitely some fun things about WarioWare. Did we have instructions? No, this is Wii U. We 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 got rid of instructions. Just look it up. This should just be a, a sleeve of paper that says just look it up on it. There were some fun game modes, but largely it did. Feel feel kind of lacking. So it's not really that surprising to me that people didn't buy it in mass, but maybe it's one of those situations where it is kind of fun enough that people actually kind of want it in hindsight, but since it didn't sell that well, there's not that many copies. Just my own guess there. Okay, I have two more. Probably what I thought was the rarest one I had. Maybe it is next to Zelda's Adventure, but the other one is also one of the rarest games that I have, and this one is super cool. You're probably not gonna have this one on your list of guesses. We have Game Boy Candy camera, but not just Game Boy camera. We have the gold Game Boy camera. This was a specific Legend of Zelda edition of the Game Boy camera that you could only buy from like a copy of Game Informer. You had to order it specialty or something. This was, I was just mentioning Chatronic, a gift from Chatronic. Very, very cool. If you're watching this chat, hey, thanks. This is super, super cool. One of the coolest presents I've ever gotten, along with uh, some of the, uh, basically, like I feel like half of these were people giving these to me. I'm, I'm a very lucky individual. So yeah, thanks, Chad. This is basically the same as the other uh, Game Boy colors or Game Boy cameras. It just has some like Zelda pictures in there. I think it's like maybe three different ones. For those of you who are unfamiliar with the Game Boy camera, it is basically a game, a very, very trippy game, actually. If I recall, I put it on my top 10 trippiest video games list back in the day. And I still hold to that. It, 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 it deserves its spot. It's gonna use my Game Boy, but I forgot it's busted. I'm gonna use my wife's old Pokemon Game Boy. It's pretty cool. Anyways, way cooler than my old busted, uh, barely held together Game Boy. 
Boy. So yeah, you can take pictures with the Game Boy camera, and then you can print them on this little Game Boy printer thing here. I also have the uh, Japanese version of the Game Boy printer. I think this is the one I used for the video back in the day. Um, hold on, it's not working. There it goes. <laughs> God, this thing is so weird. God, I don't even remember how to do this. Oh, God. <laughs> I've got some pictures of Chad Tronic on here. <laughs> I didn't even know these were on here. This is amazing. I'm discovering this for the first time. <laughs> okay, so center, center feet. <laughs> oh my god, this is great. The screen on here is so bad. Oh, I must have, I must have seen those pictures because now I'm seeing uh, pictures of me. So I, ba I barely even remember taking these. Yeah, so there you can see the uh, Zelda pictures with the, with the selfies that we took. My wife would kill me if she knew she was on camera here, but I don't think you can even really. T that's about as good of a picture of her as you're gonna get on this channel. But yeah, then you can print them out and to amazing uh, pictures here. You know you. You can uh, send these to your mom and she will say, what the hell is that? I can't see it. Well, yeah, I forgot to look at how much this is. It is pretty damn expensive. <laughs> damn, Chad, you should have kept this. $950, $1,300. And again, this is compared to the regular Game Boy camera, which is like 75 bucks. These were very, very rare. This is probably one of the rarest uh, pieces of Zelda merchandise games, fill in the blank. Just this silly little Game Boy uh, camera cartridge. All right, last, probably the rarest game that I have, My Little Pony Pinkie Pie's Party. Yeah, just kidding. The real game is Shrek Super Speedway for the Game Boy. <laughs> I'm just kidding. The actual real game is Charlie and the Church Mouse. <laughs> LSD Dream Emulator for the PlayStation. This is weirdly one of my favorite games ever. I just love walking around, never knowing what you're gonna experience. I've played this game for hours and I still sometimes see things that I've never seen before. Like just crazy things will happen. And I feel like I would have seen it by now because I put hours into this game. I even talked about it in a video for way too long. Nobody even wanted that video and I still did it anyway. And I still sometimes see crazy stuff in there that surprises me. I love chill, casual games like this and bonus points if they're really weird and trippy. This game definitely has both of those things. And even though it is in Japanese exclusively, it's really not very difficult to play even if you don't speak Japanese. I mean, you don't really need to read anything that's happening. It's more a visual experience, visual and audio, and you, uh, amazing audio, great audio. <laughs> If I'm being honest with you, I don't really know why I felt so compelled to have the actual physical version of this game because I have it emulated. I played it extensively on a PlayStation emulator. I mean, well, it's PlayStation, so I'll probably be fine. On a PlayStation emulator. But I had this deep urge, this deep need to own the physical edition. I basically did an entire video, the expensive Japanese games, just so I could buy this freaking LSD Dream emulator game and talk about it on my channel. Let's see, does it top Zelda's adventure? As well as the Game Boy Color Zelda thing, which is apparently uh, really up there too. Um, uh, kinda no. <laughs> I think if anything, this game has gone down in value. I'm a sucker and I bought it at the peak. Ah, oh, well, now I'm seeing some for more. Yeah, anywhere from 713 to like 1500. I think I bought it. I almost embarrassed to admit this for about $1,100. No, wait, I got it for cheaper because it was around a thousand, I think, or maybe it was 900. Let's just say I bought it for 20 bucks. By far one of the most expensive things I've ever bought. I wouldn't have done it if it wasn't for a video. So there you have it. Another video about video games. Let me know if there's any other kind of game video like this you'd like to see. You can check out my uh, video where I talked about the Japanese cover versus the United States covers we did about a year or two ago. Like the video and subscribe. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.